Allumage Vulcain. Allumage AP, décollage. Tous les paramètres à bord sont nominaux. It's an e-ticket ride tonight as we rumble the Amazon jungle. The mighty Ariane 5 ECA roars into the sky over Karu. 49 seconds into the flight, Ariane 5 has already broken the sound barrier here in Koru. The massive Jupiter facility will be shaking momentarily as the launcher roars out over Devil's Island, made famous by the movie Papillon. 1,300 tons of thrust, breaking the Ariane 5, free from the Earth's gravity. And look at those the pictures. 90% of that power coming from the two boosters, each one 31 meters tall, and burning 240 tons of solid propellant in two minutes. More than two tons per second. Now we feel the rumble here at Jupiter. When the boosters have done their job in less than a minute from now, Ariane uh, will be 70 kilometers in the sky, uh, traveling at more than a mile a second, faster than a bullet. You may recall that uh, we had a green screen on uh, uh, before launch. We're going to see the numbers uh, for the mission begin to appear on the bottom of the screen. But right now, enjoy that video. The data is coming to us from Gilat, a tracking station on a big hill. Behind us, two minutes into the flight, look at the pictures as Ariane 5 roars into the sky over Koru. All is uh, going green. The next big thing will be the burnout and the jettison of the twin solid rocket boosters. That will occur about three seconds from right now. Separation des étages d'accélération à poudre. And look at that picture as you can see them clearly, the two boosters falling away and the main core, the white light, that's the Ariane 5 and our two passengers making its way into the heavens. The boosters have done their job, we don't need them anymore and uh, they will fall into uh, the ocean. We've lost 600 tons in just two minutes. The Ariane 5 weighs about 180 tons now. As Ariane gets lighter, it goes faster. And there, that white spot of light in the middle of the screen, that is our two valuable passengers and the Ariane 5 at ECA. And all is going well at three minutes and eight seconds into the mission. Uh, the next uh, big event will be the jettisoning of the fairing. It will be gone in just a few seconds. Separation de la coiffe. And there it is. We watched the video so long that uh, we almost saw that occur. Uh, its job is done. It uh, has fallen off about 100 kilometers into the sky. That's 17 meter ferry. We have lost 2.4 tons again. And again, the DDO says everything is normal. Uh, the launcher now 121 kilometers into the sky. There's Bruno Girard, Vice President of Arian Space, uh, CSG. And uh, then uh, Joel Donadel, he is uh, the head of ESA's uh, Karu office. And a special welcome uh, to uh, Didier Favra, the new head of CSG for Kines. The main cryogenic stage, or the EPC, is now burning. It burns for about La nine minutes. Luminale. The EPC is really just a huge fuel tank. It carries 150 tons of liquid oxygen, 25 tons of liquid hydrogen. That engine is gulping 320 kilograms, about 700 pounds of fuel every second, 500 times more than a jet engine. I have absolutely no idea what the fuel mileage is for the Ariane 5, but it's built for speed and power, and in that arena, nobody cares about fuel mileage. And uh, I'm just uh, happy they're not dinging my credit card to fill that baby up with fuel. Uh, and this is the fifth Ariane 5 launch of 2016. 
as we uh, watch, we see on the screen the tracking stations. We'll talk more about them in a few moments. We began the year with a single satellite launch on 27 January for Ariane 5. 9th of March, we did it again. We also had dual launches on 18th June, 18th of June, that's the last time I was here, and on the 24th of August. Plans call for the Ariane 5 to fly two more missions before the end of 2016. Tonight will be the 74th success in a row for the Ariane 5. Look at the beautiful replay. Five and a half minutes ago, the Ariane 5 roared off the pad. Well, tonight we will tie the record of its predecessor, the Ariane 4. Uh, while both of them are now tied, the Ariane 5 has a dramatic advantage because of its size and power. It has successfully launched 24 more payloads, totaling almost 350,000 kilos more than uh, the historic Ariane 4 rocket. We're right on track, and uh, the rocket is uh, now 160 kilometers above Earth. Look at that replay again, just riding that pillar of power and the flames off the pad here at uh, Kourou. The final target number for speed tonight, by the way, 9.3 kilometers per second. A few more interesting uh, facts uh, for you. NBN SkyMaster 2 and GSAT 18 represent the 533rd and 534th satellites to be launched by Arian Space. They are also the 123rd and 124th satellites to go into geostationary transfer orbit by the workhorse of the fleet. That's the Arian 5 that debuted here in 2002. Back at Jupiter, more of the VIPs here in uh, the hall. All continues to go well. Uh, very shortly, the launcher will be acquired by the Natal tracking station in Brazil. Tonight, we use Galliet, uh, which is here in the car room on a big hill right behind us. Natal in Brazil, a station on Ascension Island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and uh, then Lieberville on the west coast of Africa, and Malindi, Kenya on the east coast of Africa. And coming up in about 10 seconds, uh, we will be picked up by that tracking station in Natal, Brazil. Everything is going perfect the right down the middle there. of that curve that you see in the upper right-hand side. Arian sends data to uh, these ground stations, tells us how the flight is progressing in real time. Later, engineers are going to pour over every single bit of that data to determine exactly how the vehicle performed every step of the way. It's one of the secrets behind the success of Ariane Space. The teams evaluate every aspect of every mission, ensuring that every technical parameter was met, sharing that data full transparency with their customers and allowing them to learn each and every time more about this incredibly complex machine, the Ariane 5 ECA, again, that tonight will fly its 74th success. You hear that everything is going normally. Next major event, the cutoff of the main stage of the EPC. That'll happen uh, about 10 seconds from right now. You'll hear the DDO make uh, that call, and we'll wait for that. And there it is. The main stage has now completed its job. It will drop EPC. away and fall into the ocean off Africa. The upper stage, or the EPC, will now burn for nearly 16 minutes. 151 kilometers into the sky, almost 7 kilometers per second. Several of the key personnel and the VIPs that are here in the Jupiter Auditorium located right below my broadcast location. They've been here for a couple of days now. The staff of Arian Space has really rolled the red carpet out for them, and they've been touring the space base in the local area. Tonight they had the best seat for uh, the launch. Those VIPs have traveled a long way to get here. We told you earlier uh, that uh, we're about 500 kilometers north of the equator in the Amazon rainforest. Why are we here? Simple physics. 
The Earth spins faster at the equator than it does at, say, the Kennedy Space Center in the Florida. And that allows the satellite operators, in many cases, to launch heavier payloads, put more fuel on their satellites, increase the operational life, and that means more profits uh, for them. That's why we're the undisputed champion of the commercial launch industry. Here's more about GSAT-18. With GSAT-18, ISRO is once again poised for yet another major launch event. This new communication satellite will soon roar into space. The GSAT-18 will support existing communication services such as television, telecommunication, VSAT and DSNG services in the country. GSAT-18 is built by ISRO on its proven I3K bus. It has 48 communication transponders in C, extended C, and KU band of frequencies. This satellite will provide C band service to Indian mainland, Andaman Nicobar, and Lakshadweep islands, whereas the KU band service will cover Indian mainland and Andaman Nicobar islands. Like all of ISRO's spacecraft, teams from all centers of ISRO have worked closely together on the GSAT-18 program. The communication payloads were realized at Space Applications Center at Ahmedabad. ISRO Satellite Center Isaac at Bengaluru was responsible for the spacecraft bus, including fabrication of mainframe electronic packages and the integration of the spacecraft. Other ISRO centers like LPSC delivered propellant and propulsion system components. VSSC at Tiruvannandapuram supplied all the composite elements like antennae, yokes and substrates for solar panels and pyros. Sensor elements were delivered by LEOS and IISU provided inertial systems elements. Master control facility at Hassan will provide the ground station support from the launch time till the end of life of spacecraft. The satellite approximately weighs 3,400 kilograms and contains almost 1,920 kilograms of propellant, which will keep it operational for at least 15 years. Initially, the launch vehicle places the satellite in a highly elongated geosynchronous transfer orbit. At the moment of the highest distance from Earth, the Apogee boost motor of the satellite is precisely fired to achieve a circular geosynchronous orbit. Two deployable dual-gridded reflectors, DGR, are mounted on the east and west sides of the spacecraft for communication. A 1.2-meter body-mounted antenna is fixed on the Earth viewing side. The two solar panels on the satellite convert solar energy into electrical power needed to run all onboard systems. During eclipses, when the spacecraft passes through the Earth's shadow, all electrical loads are managed using the onboard lithium ion batteries. The spacecraft is now ready for launch onboard the Ariane 5 launcher of the European Space Agency, French Guiana. The GSAT-18 will provide the current communication services such as television, telecommunication, VSAT and DSNG services to support the nation's communication needs. And we're back at Jupiter Live and during the video the Ariane 5 ECA and its two passengers were acquired by the Ascension Island tracking station and all is going well. As I mentioned, ISRO is one of Ariane Space's oldest and most trusted customers. This is the 20th time that they have allowed us to place a satellite into orbit. 
The relationship dates back to 1981 when Ariane Flight L03 placed the experimental Apple satellite into space for Israel. 86% of all Israel contracts open to foreign competition have been awarded to Ariane Space. Israel is a loyal customer indeed. We will launch two more of their satellites in 2017. Everything going perfect at 15.15 into uh, the mission, right down uh, the middle of the track, as they say, uh, for the Ariane 5 ECA. Here's more news from Israel. Disclo, Arian Space and CSG have a long-lasting relationship and that provided an excellent backdrop for a very smooth conduct of launch-based operations. The campaign was carried out over two phases and in both the phases, the activities were carried out in a very cordial environment without any incidents or non-conformances, which speaks about high professionalism of the teams involved from all the three great organizations. Apart from official engagements, the teams also could interact at personal level and had great cultural exchanges, which helps in making the official work that much easier. Minutes before the separation, our spacecraft control center at MCF Hassan will acquire the signal and the spacecraft is oriented to generate the power required for transfer orbit operations. Subsequently, orbit raising maneuvers are carried out to place the spacecraft in its final geosynchronous orbit. This will be followed by solar panel and reflector deployments and finally the orientation of antennas towards Earth. The spacecraft will acquire the desired station at 74 degrees east in about a week's time, after which payloads can be put on for their 